crafts at Young Life Camps is to provide a space for meaningful conversations and offerings that promote creativity and belonging delivered through service and hospitality. Awesome. What are some words there that stand out to you, Allie? Uh, belonging and service. Um, yeah. Great. Great. All right, Debbie, number two. Crafts operations include quality offerings at various price ranges, well-trained staff, and a physical space that is clean and welcoming. Great. As you look at that, what are some words that stick out for you, Debbie? Um, quality offerings and various price ranges. Great. I want you to focus on the word various. We talk about in the store, good, better, best. So we wanna make sure in our craft areas that not everything is um, $5, for example. We want there to be range of offerings. And then well-trained staff. One of the ways we offer hospitality is if the staff know what they're doing. And sometimes it's about them learning so that they can teach. Haley, would you add anything as you think about training summer staff um, in crafts? I think something that's been really helpful for me has just been letting the summer staffer loose in crafts. That sounds kind of crazy. Unlike the rest of retail, it's a lot more like structured and here's what I'm going to teach you. Where with crafts, I, I think what's best is to just let them play um, and give them like the freedom to look through what's available and make what they want to make. And then they can teach themselves that way. Um, I give them sometimes like an iPad to like look up best ways to do hair wraps or things like that. So I think just being creative, I think while they're like learning and playing by actually doing and making things, it's really helpful. And then they can obviously better instruct people. Um, and then if they're making things throughout the day, I think it also helps kids realize, oh, what's available, what they can make. And it's also just a good conversation starter. Great. Thanks for that. And I would I would second that is if they're doing it and it, they discovered the idea, sometimes they have some more passion about it. I think over the years, we've had some craft offerings that have remained consistent for a number of years. But if I think about 15 years ago, the craft offerings have changed. So what you did last summer doesn't have to be the same thing you offer this summer. So, I mean, I was around when we were doing rooster feathers uh, in our in our hair, those little hair clamps. And then a couple summers ago, it was uh, tinsel, tinsel hair wrap. So a lot of variety. All right, number three, Sam. Yes, um, craft operations are meant to earn a fair return on sales, which is to be channeled back into the general operating budget of the individual camp. The intent is to minimize camp fees. Okay, quiz question. How do you know that you're getting a fair return on your sales? Your cost of sales like analysis. Great, exactly. Um, I did notice that we don't actually have an official form for this, but if we apply what we've been learning this last week, you take your cost and all of the elements that go into creating that craft, you use the profit margin guide that we've given as a national metric, and that's what, where you set your retail price. Um, so we might need to create something a little more standard, but it's basically that. That's how you ensure that you're making a fair return on your, on your craft offerings. All right, uh, Haley, walk us through these next five statements on, we've talked about the why, but these are the standards and the few policies in crafts. Help us with those. Okay, I'm just going to read them and then I'll kind of elaborate a little bit. So the first one says the craft team will demonstrate an appropriate greeting and offer assistance to guests. Staff will serve customers in a Christ-like manner and with a smile. I think um, this is kind of self-explanatory, but I think it's really important to not miss um, the folks that come to the craft area. And like Kathleen said earlier, a lot of times the craft area is like a safe space for a select few kids that come all the time they'll go every day um, and so I think there's a real opportunity to get to know kids and to make a lasting first impression and so I think it's just appropriate like and important that we train our our folks working in those areas to be kind and friendly and wanting to help um, and to 
you know, offer as much help as they can without doing everything for the kid. Um, and I think it's just a really great way to show Jesus to the kids that might not feel like the swing fits them the best or the pool or whatever. So um, there's a lot of, that's just kind of like the basics of crafts, but I think it's really important that we make a good first impression. Um, and then the next one says, while staffing varies at each camp location, staff will be trained to teach craft offerings or set up the leader to facilitate the details of the craft project. A leader led craft or a group of customers helping with each other projects ensures that the craft staff can facilitate their responsibilities while serving customers. So uh, that's kind of a lot of words, but basically it's just talking about um, really setting up the leader to be the winner of the situation again. I know a lot of times in Young Life, we want to make sure that the, the leader is set up really well. And I think crafts also speaks into that. Um, so speaking personally at Southwind, we're not opening this year, unfortunately, but we typically have a poolside craft area that offer snacks as well. And so that's a lot for one person to manage on their own um, and to do crafts. So I think a lot of times we rotate and have another person in there, but I think it's just really helpful if you can set up the leader to be the winner of the craft area, like say, hey, I'm going to teach you how to do a hair wrap, and then you can teach your cabin how to do it on each other instead of like my summer staffer physically making 45 hair wraps, like that's our whole afternoon and it's just not going to work. So train the leader and encourage them to take kind of the reins on that. Um, I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump in here real quick. Yeah. How many summer staff do you guys have allocated to the crafts areas? One, one, two, one, one, two. Okay, so just a little tip in staffing this. Oftentimes, the snack bar, for example, is really slow after lunch. It's free time. All retail areas are open. But sometimes I would have started my a snack bar assigned summer staff to the craft areas and look for those times that are busy. Um, it's also a great place for your intern at certain times to pop in and help crowd manage because crafts is one of those things that can expand and contract really quickly. So especially relying on your summer staff that are in the snack bar areas right after lunch is a, is a great way to manage that if you just especially if you just have one. Yeah, I agree. I usually have for us someone rotating down there like every hour at least to check in and see how it's going down there. So um, just be thinking of that to help also serve your summer staff well. Okay, the next um, letter says providing instruction sheets for product offerings can ensure attendant hospitality while balancing customer interaction and traffic variations throughout the day. So I'm not sure what y'all's craft areas are uh, look like, but depending on um, what's available, we have like a whole stack of sheets printed and laminated, and then we can set those out on the table. It's also really helpful for the summer staff to have those at the beginning, and then they can learn how to make what's offered. Um, so that's just something you can find on our Pinterest page. There's lots of instructions just Googling things and printing out the instructions really helpful. Again, that way your summer staffer doesn't have to be involved in every single thing that's being made. Um, and then the last item is talking about the national um, retail benchmark for crafts. And so basically it's saying the profit margin is at least 75% and markups will reflect perceived value and group by purchasing accordingly. Um, so for example, if your beads cost 25 cents, it will retail at a dollar. Um, and then it gives you a link for a profit margin calculator. So just be thinking and be aware of how much things cost and then try to at least have a 75% markup. Sometimes you'll have more and that's great. Um, and also just think about how you're selling things. So like for example, I used to sell like friendship bracelet material, like a embroidery thread, and I would cut it out. And then I was like, what am I doing? Because at the end of the summer, I would have like a ball of embroidery thread that I couldn't use anymore because it was just scraps. So now I sell the whole skein for a, a dollar and it costs me six cents for that one skein. So it saves time and I have a really good return on an investment. So just think through 
what saves money, what works efficiently, and be aware of like how much things cost. That's a great one. Let me ask this, what kind of craft offerings do you have? And, and I realize that not all of you are open this summer. So let's talk about normally. What are some craft offerings that you guys have? We've got everything to make bracelets, spoon doggles, keychains, all of that kind of stuff. We have tons of twine and beads. Um, we also have stuff to make earrings, which was really popular a couple years ago. Um, headbands, elastic. Um, we've got temporary tattoos in our craft shack as well. Great, great. Others? Yeah, I would say we have a lot of what Allie has, but also I think we have those things you can kind of like hammer into like keys or keychains and things like that. And so that's fun. I don't know what it's exactly called. Um, and then I, we also do the tinsel. And so that's fun. That was a huge hit. I remember the summer I was here, a summer staffer came. We were like, is that like a thing? She's like, yeah, everybody loves it. And so then Julie got some and it just blew up and it's crazy. That's such a great example, Angela. Craft ideas, you know, are born just like that. So Sam, what about Timberwolf? What kind of craft offerings? Yeah, I'm still figuring that out because they didn't open last year either. But from what I see, like product wise that they still have, um, it's like a lot of beads, bandanas. They have like some pendant things, um, the embroidery floss for friendship bracelets. Um, but yeah, I'm still kind of trying to figure it out because a lot of our, like our menu wasn't super clear from 2000, whenever it's before Shannon and I were both here. So we, neither of us have seen it open for a summer. So we're just kind of piecing together what we can find from stuff we're finding around. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> we're doing packets this year. So you're going to do the packets. Okay. Uh, Let's see, at, at one camp, they were doing the the pearl, just the single pearl on a leather string that was really popular. Um, I think uh, Woodley for many years has had uh, tie-dye t-shirts, but, and, and Haley, you can speak to this as well. This is not a, this is not a craft project for the faint of heart. And I don't actually think it's a good one for this summer because we're all understaffed. This is a heavier lift. So um, it, it, it has great potential, but it does have some task involved with it. Um, other ideas we haven't mentioned, anyone else? I know Trail West looks a little bit different because we have like three-year-olds who come to the craft cart. Um, but we do a painting on the porch thing with like little canvases and a teacher and juice boxes instead of wine. Um, but like one of the painting on the, you know, those painting glasses you go to, and that's super popular, even with like teenagers at our camp. So it's pretty fun. I love that juice boxes and all. Um, a couple of years ago, nail art where some scraps of wood and little teeny nails, and then you would wrap a word with the embroidery uh, twine was was popular. Um, and glitter tattoos, but that always made my inner OCD like get inflamed, the thought of adding glitter to camp. So proceed thoughtfully. That's one of those things you might wanna consult your uh, housekeeping supervisor <laughs> before you do. Um, so Haley, anything that we haven't mentioned that's been out there that you've tried? Um, I think that's all pretty standard. The one thing that I have, I have free coloring pages and like colored pencils, just so it's an option for kids that they don't have to pay anything. Um, I'm pretty sure we have the pages still in the Dropbox, but I can add them if not. And they're pretty simple or just like plain paper so kids can color, you know, draw whatever they want, feel like drawing, so. I love that. And honestly, Haley, make make a note to add those back because I was just in the Dropbox and I did not see them. That's okay. just such a great, you know, when we talk about good, better, best, 
Um, okay, well, the very last thing there on number five is every craft operation should have two things. It should have a cost analysis, COS, and a CRG. So this is this should hopefully have been done for all of you, but it's how you do crafts at your location. So speaking of your location, thanks for sending some pictures. I'm going to share a few on my screen. Let's see here. All right. Well, no, nope. it hopped to the next one. Let me try this again there. All right. So this is this is Clearwater. Yes, yes, it is. OK. Um, Angel, why don't you tell us a little bit about your craft area, how the maybe the wins and losses that you're aware of, because you were an intern, so you've seen this in operation. Yeah, I feel like the hair wraps were always a huge win. I feel like every time I went up there and our summer staffer would, would be like, let's go help her out because she's really busy with doing a bunch of hair wraps or teaching people how to do hair wraps. Um, I also feel like just the simple bracelets that you can make, like friendship bracelets type thing, were also huge. Tinsel, like I said earlier, was really big. I didn't really ever see like create a mug. I that wasn't huge, but I know when I took kids to camp, we sat and did that, and that was a really special craft we did together, and they loved it taking it home. So I do know that's a special craft that I've seen done. Um, bandanas I felt like weren't huge, but some bought stuff. I also am not a huge crafty person, so I feel like this is an area that I'm going to have to like stretch myself in. But great, thanks for sharing. A couple things to note here: this is covered, so think of your craft space, and uh, you can add this under space and layouts. Think of it being uh, weather tolerant. I guess is the word I would say. You know, if it's raining, if it's cold, if it's windy, if it's super sunny out be thoughtful of the space from a weather standpoint the other thing is this is really well organized and very you know when we were talking about this with display and merchandise when something isn't well organized in a store or even this craft it's not as welcoming so this is very approachable the other thing to add atmosphere is music and we actually haven't talked about that but typically we play song list in all of our areas starting off on days one and two that are just all secular songs and moving into days three and four to uh, more contemporary Christian songs. So every year I would just make a day one, day two, day three, day four, day five CD and that, that dates me right there. Um, and that was the playlist that we had going in all of our areas. Now, granted, by the end of the summer, my intern and I were really tired of those songs. Um, that also could be something you ask your intern. But music definitely creates atmosphere. So be mindful of some fun music. She also has a range of options here uh, in on the menu here. So you, we mentioned this already. In your menu, having a good, better, best offering is really helpful. Um, also, single individuals that come up and groups. So Haley, how have you addressed that? I know the coloring pages certainly help for those folks that come that maybe don't have any money and they're just a single person who maybe is not connecting with their camp or their, uh, their camp trip or their leader, having a space that an individual can come. What have you done to help that? To help with individuals? Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've just always encouraged my summer staffer or my intern, even if they're able to be down there to kind of have one-on-one -on -one conversations with those folks. Um, and I've even like walked down to the craft area and I've seen like just the conversations that can come from that. And I think once a staff person or like a summer staff person starts talking, it really like changes the dynamic down there and it like I think kids feel more comfortable to start talking to other people that they didn't know before um so I think just being like I think it's easy to just not really engage in conversation or to stick yourself out there but I would encourage like 
you to not only encourage yourself, but encourage your summer staffers to, to be bold and to, to reach out to those that are by themselves. But, you know, just ask them basic questions. Hey, what are you coloring? Where are you from? And then just see where that comes. And then, you know, I think a lot of times leaders are kind of aware if they see like someone else alone that they can also dive into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, these are a couple other pictures in the upper, uh, let's see, left-hand corner. That is Timberwolf. Sam, what do you, you know, what do you think? Have you seen this in person? Is this, uh, has this worked really well? Um, I have seen it in person as a leader a few years ago. Um, and my girls always love doing crafts. So that is really fun. Um, actually the last time this was opened was when I led two years ago, that last session. And so we kind of like opened it up and it was just all there. So I wouldn't say that that is like a prime example of like organization or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, I know that the coloring was a really big deal for some of my young life girls because they like to be able to sit, even if they don't feel super creative, like they can color a coloring page while their friends are making bracelets and things like that. So, um, so yeah, and it's really helpful. It's covered so you can do it in the rain, um, which is like, it, it's nice that it doesn't eliminate the option to be doing crafts outside. Gotcha. Well, this next image it, it, there shows your craft pack. Mm -hmm. uh, this next image I included because uh, Sutton, this is at Tro West, but this is the before because the after hasn't been finished yet. And I appreciate this is that this doesn't have to stay the same. You can innovate and use your crafts in a lot of different ways. So tell us what's planned. What would your after picture look like? Yeah, so this is um, like 10 minutes into me destroying the craft cart, the upper right photo. Obviously, all y'all's other photos are beautiful. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, basically what I'm doing, those um, are the doors that are uh, in front of the craft cart. So those will go back on and close. But um, I'm gonna wallpaper the whole inside of the cart with this like black and white, herringbone-ish, no, not even herringbone. I'll show y'all, I'll send y'all the after picture. But um, yeah, right now I have it all sanded down. Um, we're gonna paint it black, I think, and then put turquoise over and then like sand off to make it kind of a little Western vintagey look. Our craft cart has never had a name before. Um, all of our other retail locations have a name, but this has always just been the craft cart. So we're going to name it the Wagon Wheel Craft Cart. Um, and yeah, my vision basically is just, just put new shelves and little hanging bars on there to just hang embroidery floss and beads and all the things. So more to come. I can't wait to see it. And speaking of names, the this one down here at Castaway, the Craft Cabana, um, it's down on the beach, and it definitely has, you know, you spoke about Castaway's theme earlier today. This is where it, it, their theme went actually a little Caribbean, uh, but these two get uh, uh, summer staffers just sit on this porch and they're helping. Uh, kids come up. There's even if you can see the little paddles on the side, the the washer game. So it's actually just a little fun activity. See if you can hook the washer. So that they've made it a place to want to be. Um, and then finally, we've got Saranac with the craft shack. Hallie, tell us what's going down uh, there. Um, our craft shack is at the outpost, so it's connected to our beach snack bar. And so there's kind of a nice, like, central hangout location at the beach. Um, it is covered. It doesn't have a lot of seating. Um, and since it's still in a little bit winter time here, I wasn't able to go take some current photos. But these are from uh, last, last time we had the craft shack, so in 2019. Um, and I would say it's definitely, <laughs> there's room for improvement. Um, there were, I remember sessions where summer staff would just take it and run like, and do, you know, 
incredible things with kids. And then there would be sessions where it's like, the summer staff don't really know what they're doing and they aren't really getting the hang of it. And so that kind of reflects in how campers are served there. Um, there's like four, there's a bar top right in front of that um, menu there. And so the summer staff sit behind the bar top and kids can sit at the bar top and um, talk to the summer staffers there. And we also have a bead cart that rolls out um, from there. So great, great. Well, thank you guys for sharing. I'm going to pause before we uh, go on to offerings and menu development and just pause and say, what questions do you have as the retail manager overseeing crafts? What are some things that you'd like us to talk about or have some questions about? I think as I think about this summer, we are kind of in a similar spot where we're um, not opening up the bead shop area and we're going to sell the little craft packs. Um, and so I think that's good, but I also am curious, like what are ideas that people have around still creating spaces for kids to belong and be creative? And while we may not have staffing, um, like we don't have a summer staffer assigned to it this year, but I'm trying to think, okay, slow times, do we, yeah, how do we point people in the direction or let them know, or how are we advertising the craft pack? So I'm just curious if all of you or any of you have thought about uh, what that actually looks like this summer and how we can still provide the ministry of crafts uh, without maybe the same level of time investment that we would have in a normal year. It's a great question. Haley, I'm going to have you get queued up to answer that one thing. I'll start off in saying advertising is real. So uh, I would recommend putting that in the trip leader letter. Anyone coming to your camp needs to know that crafts is not open, but here's where you're going to get your craft packs because it, literally it would take them until day four to find you. And then they'd be like, oh, you had something all along. So getting them in the loop before they even get there is great. Haley, what would you add? Um, something we've been doing throughout the school year is, well, I've been selling the craft packs in our snack bar throughout the school year. And I have been encouraging like whoever's working in there to open. Well, I've put aside one that's not a, like ready to be sold. And um, and they it looks like a real one. And so I just, I'm like, hey, during the day, if you guys have a slow time, just start making stuff from the bag and then that way they can see what's offered. They can kind of see, oh, there is a crafts option. Um, and I just have them sitting like right by the register and people are always like, oh, a craft pack, that's a cute idea. So just having them like out visibly, I think would be super helpful. Or if there's time, you could just set aside a couple bags that aren't fully ready um, to be sold and then they can make from there. Um, one thing that just popped in my head is maybe putting like at Lost Canyon, I know you guys have like a craft room kind of thing, but maybe putting on the window like craft packs available at the snack bar or in the store, wherever you're selling them, um, just at the original craft location. So if people like are like, oh, well, I'm at Southwind, I'm going to go to the poolside porch and get my crafts and then they aren't there to kind of relocate them to a place that there are crafts available. And then I think I also am gonna bring like my coloring pages up to the snack bar and that way kids can have that too. I was just showing an image of uh, Haley's craft pack. You did that signage on, on Canva. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's super cute, brown paper bag. It really looks packaged together. And then instructions, do you put a couple like tools and things that they need. Like I noticed scissors, are they just keeping those? Or are they checking them out or? Yeah, no, I bought scissors, like a pack of 30 um, on Amazon. And so that way they weren't taking my personal scissors like and that way, and they're just like little like kid scissors. Um, and then there's washi tape in there too. That way they don't have to borrow tape or scissors. Nice, what else? What? are you doing coloring pages of like um are you doing camp specific coloring pages or is it just like kind of some random assortment of coloring pages yeah i think there's like lots of options you can always get one of those books like kathleen showing and make copies i 
one year someone made like just basic young life coloring pages and it had like a yl and then young life and some other things i haven't seen any camp specific i would love for that to be developed but um google too has some cute coloring pages so nothing crazy Okay, I have a question. Um, so at Trial West, I'm trying to kind of figure out, like I mentioned before, like we have little kids that come and want to make a bracelet or whatever. And I think just don't have the knowledge or creativity yet of a high school kid of like, oh, I can put this bead together and this string and make this. Um, so I'm trying to put together like you buy the Evelyn or something. And that is a certain bracelet that has the step-by-step -step instructions. And it's like, grab three vials of such and such bead, grab this string, you know? And so is that something that I can do in Square? Like create that specific? I know we are trying to like keep, you know, universal things like a leather bracelet, but can I name little packs a certain name and have them buy like that? Oh, for sure. There is okay. definitely flexibility in that. And and we actually have not talked about Square. Um, have you guys seen the Square terminals for crafts? No. Okay. Let me, let me find, let me find that real quick. So that's like, I could just create a variation of the Claire bracelet or something like that. A, or just even make it generic and call it the name bracelet. Yeah, Angela, hold yours up. You have, so there, there's the hand terminal for the crafts. Um, we typically uh, try and keep the menu really small and limited to your point set because the screen is so small and you, you don't have, there aren't barcode systems. So you, you don't wanna have to scroll through multiple pages to find things. So you might think about how to group things in a way that's, as broad as possible if you're tracking something like that do we, um, you could you could do like just say like the name or like what just come up with one i don't know if you want to track like oh this one's selling more than this one but you could just have like one option and then instead of like they're buying the evelyn versus the Haley, like they're just buying that offering instead of like yeah. a friendship bracelet or a craft pack if that makes sense okay yeah do we have to use that craft thing or can I continue to just use my iPad thing that I have? You, you can still use your iPad as you're registered. This is not very expensive and it is really easy to use. You can actually, and, and Haley, I don't know about you, some craft folks have gotten aprons with pockets in the front and slipped this in like a handheld or bigger fanny packs that they can uh run all the sales through just whatever you're doing you have to do wholly and fully you can't have like oh i'm taking a cash box for cash and i'm running credit cards you got to have one system of record throughout okay that makes sense thanks Haley, can you talk a little bit about the handheld terminal and what has it been like for you um yeah i have mine right here i haven't used it that much just because we haven't had it open a lot but it's been super helpful um because it is so easy to use i think the most i've used it was at wild 2020 when we were working the store but um i think what i love about square is that it's really easy to teach people and so with the little handheld the card gets inserted uh, or you can swipe right here, like down the side. It has the ability to like print a receipt for people. Um, and then when you click on, like it could show you your entire square dashboard, but you, when you select crafts, it'll just show you what's available in crafts. And so you don't have to scroll through like all your t-shirts and all your snack bar offerings. It's just gonna show you crafts. So it's super easy for crafts. I've had the white iPad before, and then I switched to this um last summer with the hopes of being able to like walk around and sell things and it's just easy to transport and super mobile so it is super easy, easy to use and i should probably restate this is 
when we have crafts, it falls under other retail, which is your uh, camp number plus one three. And that includes concessions, coffee, vending, and crafts. When you sell crafts through your point of sale in the store, you've crossed over that kind of invisible barrier into O3 accounting um, accounts. So you're going to have to manage that. And there's, there is a couple of different ways. Refer back to that Monday morning where I said, run it under this SKU and then have a note in Outlook to have your bookkeeper transfer sales. Because you're going to over-report sales and you're going to have an expense with no corresponding revenue to it. So your profit margins and crafts will be absolutely tanked. So there is good accounting if you do move into the O3, which is true of anything. Um, keep good accounts of when you cross over to a different area in retail. Make sure that you've matched revenue and expense properly, and your bookkeeper can be a great resource for that. But don't just go, oh, I'm going to bring t-shirts and sell them down in the craft area. Or I used to be able to get my bandanas from a from a store vendor, but then I'd sell them in the craft area. Well, I had to make that expense transfer. So just make sure you're keeping good accounting as you move product within different retail areas. A uh, quick question along those lines. Would yep. you recommend that we sell the craft packs through the store or through the snack bar? Is it easier? It's cleaner. It's cleaner in the snack bar, but it's not impossible. Just assign the, the SKU that I put in the Monday retail update. It's already created for you. Mm -hmm. It's set up to have no cost. So it's a non-inventoried item. So it's it's already set up the right way. Um, and then just make a note to run that report in the end of the fiscal year to clean out that revenue, put it in the right expense account, and your bookkeeper can make that transfer. So either can happen. One has an easy solution. It just involves your uh, bookkeeper to do a few things on your behalf. Gotcha. Thanks. Good question, though. This might be a silly question, but like with that cool new crafts register, how do y'all do cash do y'all have like a whole register with a cash box and everything i've heard fanny packs mm -hmm. okay i still have my cash box like in case you know i don't want them carrying a, a lot of money around but it's craft so they're probably not going to be carrying a lot of money around so <laughs> okay. um yeah fanny packs is fine i just have the cash box down there from my ipad so okay so if I continue to use our iPad that we already have, a fanny pack is appropriate combination. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. You don't just want to, when I meant cash box, I meant the, the tally sheets in the old school way that we would tally sales and record them in the cash box. And that was our point of sale. So either you're using the terminal and doing that, even though you might have different tenders with cash or credit card, but not the tallied cash box and and pars in crafts is somewhere between 50 to 100 dollars. so you you're, you don't really have a lot of cash on hand all right other questions that you're curious about related to crafts i would also um just be interested I feel like I struggle to train summer staff in crafts. Like sometimes girls are really creative and it's really awesome because you don't have to do much um, in terms of like training them. But other times I get summer staff who will ask like, oh, well, I don't know how to make these things. Like, how do I learn? And so I feel like that's kind of where I struggle because it's like, well, I know how to make some things, but I don't know how to make other things. So if you have any tips on training summer staff, that would be helpful. Well, I bet Haley does, but I'm going to jump in and say one thing that you've highlighted is that first day that summer staff arrive, you have just said goodbye to eight summer staff, probably from the first session. So there's lots of big feelings sometimes. And then you have eight eager people that are showing up all at the same time, and you can't be in all four retail places at the same time. So definitely think about your training, having a self-guided uh, training that they can you can hand them a welcome packet and say read this go on the ipad go on this website so i recommend some elements of your training being they do on their own and then when you get down after you've gone through some other areas then you could spend some time with them 
um, and you can dive in more in details. But definitely because you have four separate areas all at the same time and the craft people don't need to know how to run the point of sale in the store. So Haley, how have you managed that? Yeah, I think that's a, a great like, I don't want to call it an issue, but a, a challenge of crafts. I think giving yourself grace and being like, I can't, like what Kathleen said, like, I can't do it all the first day. Like, they'll be all right. Um, they're going to learn as they go and they're going to teach themselves. It might feel overwhelming at first because you want to be there. But I think, you know, setting yourself up well now by like researching, coming up with, um, or finding tutorials is really helpful that they can learn and play with down there when they're alone for a little bit, I think is great. Again, like I said, I sometimes will hand them an iPad and I'm like, okay, Google. And there's, I mean, there's like a million YouTube videos about crafts. So, and then if some people learn better that way versus like reading a piece of paper. So giving them some time with that. And then a lot of times at the end of like the first few days, um, of training or first day or two, I'll be like, okay, why don't you guys all go down to crafts and chat together? It's good for them to like bond. And also they can kind of like take inspiration from each other. Um, and I think don't forget about your intern. A lot of times like the, my intern for me has spent a majority of the time in the craft area versus me um, so just, yeah, try to use resources. I think another, a lot of times too, like because of the location of our craft area, other summer staffers, when they have a break, go to the craft area. And so don't forget about them as a resource. And then they all just kind of feed off each other. And I feel like by the end of it, then they're like pros and they're teaching me things. So. And, and I would tag on to that. Hopefully your entire menu isn't new summer to summer. So there's some core bestsellers that are gonna remain static. So we're not talking about saying to the summer stuff, I don't know anything. Hopefully there's a handful of things that are already figured out. Um, and I do really like that idea, Haley, of you know your retail team, all the summer staff that work in retail, having some bonding, some team building time by going down to the craft area and making something or asking the summer staff that are assigned to the craft, teach the rest of us and we'll all have matching bracelets and it gives them a chance to test drive teaching somebody um, how to do that. And then the other thing that also Haley mentioned to reiterate, we've talked about this, remind yourself a hundred times you're the retail manager, you're not the retail specialist for. So really set up your interns. In fact, at Saranac, I asked, I had two interns, um, I would ask one of them to be in charge. She did the buying for crafts. She, um, she did the ordering once she got there. She cleaned it out. She set it out. She came up with ideas that she wanted to teach the summer staff. So it was her kingdom. Uh, and so I, I really encourage you to invite people to have vision and to hold leadership where it is appropriate so that you can hold the leadership reins of the things only you can do. So just, there's a lot of nuance and balance in that, but just make sure you're delegating yourself into being a manager, um, not the intern, so. So no pressure, you just need to hire a creative intern. <laughs> so. Other craft questions. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap this up with a couple highlights and uh, some homework. Um, so uh, the first bit of homework for you, or an action item, is I'd love for all of you to go to the dashboard of retail after this call and go to 2019 and see what your camp's revenue was for crafts. I think it's really important to calibrate how much time and energy you wanna to give to crafts by understanding its net income. So just get a sense of what, what is this retail center generating? Nationally, overall, it was about $88,000, which is fantastic. But at your location, what was that number? It's also, in next year, future years, it's a great number to see how can I improve that. Not this summer, but in future summers, how can I improve that? Um, the next thing is I'd love for you to go to the Craft Pinterest board. Uh, just just scan through it and see if there's anything that catches your eye that's trendy, that's relevant, maybe even that uses the product that you already have in stock. Um, and then um, 
Haley, if you'll remember to put those coloring pages in Dropbox, I would, if you don't have coloring pages, I would add that. I think it's just a great low cost option. So for crafts, to wrap up, as you think about your menu and your offerings and how to set up your intern, be thinking range of price, good, better, best. Be thinking about profitability, making sure that you can turn at that 75% profit. Make sure it's visualized and represented, whether it's on the menu, priced right, and instructions, that it's something that can be produced and it's visible to the customer. And then finally, that you've got options that an individual can do and a group can do. Um, and that is all that I have for crafts. Our next module is on Wednesday. It's on coffee. Um, raise your hand if you do not have a coffee shop and you're on this call. Yeah, Ali. So if you don't, if you don't have coffee, you don't have to to join. But if you do, um, the some of the things I'd love for you to do before coffee uh, module is to read through the coffee manual. We haven't actually asked you to read from from A to C yet, but uh, coffee is one of those things that's so visual and we have a lot of images in there. Just get that as a base because we're going to be talking more theory and uh, philosophy and not as much about the details when we come to coffee because all of our machines are a little different. So really want you to ground with what is already documented on coffee. And the other uh, homework task is get a hold of last month's detailed trial balance and revenue and expense. Those are called DTBs or r &Es and your camp manager or your bookkeeper can send you last month's detailed trial balance. And I'd love for each of you to have your own uh, copies from your own camp locations. All right, so Wednesday, we'll start with coffee in the morning. In the afternoon, we'll go to reports, and then we'll have a time, a panel, where we're just gonna open it up for questions. So this is a great time for you to join and just come up with any question. And let me reinforce, no question, none, are you a dumb question? This is a safe place to ask those questions about what kind of things should I have in my drawer that always that I get asked for all the time? Um, what when should I take my day off? Or do you guys take days off? And the answer is yes, you do. You do take days off. And we can talk about that. So just it'll just kind of be open session for any type of questions that are on your mind. They can be business related, buying related, or personal. So be prepared for that. That's all I have. Is there anything, Haley, that you would add that we haven't mentioned about crafts that you think is really critical? Um, well, I think the last thing that I was just thinking of is, I don't know if y'all talked about it before, but I made this like Amazon shopping list uh, that has all craft items on there. And I put it in the Dropbox. Um, it's under craft craft resources and then there's a craft pack folder so it has pictures of the craft packs I made and then it has like this google doc with the link to the amazon um shopping list and we just kind of I've talked to a bunch of retail managers and we put our favorite items in there amazon is probably the biggest vendor for me that I use because it's free shipping they, they already know that I am tax exempt things like that um, and it has pretty much everything you would need for your craft packs if that's something you're interested in. So, great! I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's a, that's been a new new switch for us is to move to that. Any, yeah. Anything else? All right. Well, we're going to wrap up a little bit early, but thanks so much for your time today, guys. See you on Wednesday. Thank you. Kathleen, can I ask?